Hello, welcome back to the lecture session on multivariate calculus integration. In the last two lectures, we had been discussing line integrals of vector fields. Today's lecture session, we will see a very important theorem that is Green's theorem. This theorem essentially relates line integrals with double integrals. So let us see the statement of this theorem. So suppose that we have a region R in the xy plane bounded by a closed piecewise smooth curve C and let F equal to PXYI plus QXYJ be a continuous vector function with continuous first partial derivatives del P del Y and del Q del X in some domain containing the region R. Then the Green's theorem states that the line integral p dx plus q dy along the curve c is equal to this double integral del q del x minus del p del y dx dy over the region r. Here the symbol of course indicates that the curve or the contour c is a closed one and the integration is performed along the curve in anti-clockwise direction. However, if the region R is such that the boundary C consists of two parts C1 and C2 as shown in this figure, then C1 is transferred in counterclockwise direction and C2 is traversed in clockwise direction. This essentially means actually as we integrate along the entire boundary C of the region R, we move in a direction such that the region R is on the left. Now, let us see an important application of Green's theorem in finding area of the region R. So, let us note that if the function Q is equal to X and the function P is equal to minus Y, then the line integral p dx plus q dy will become minus y dx plus x dy. And what happens to the double integral? The double integral expression, we remember, it's del q del x minus del p del y. So del q del x will be 1 and minus del p del y will be also 1. So this will actually give us 2 times the double integral dx dy. And therefore, we ultimately obtain that the double integral dx dy over the region R is equal to half the line integral x dy minus y dx along the contour C. And I hope that we remember very well that the double integral dx dy over R gives nothing but the volume of the region R. Thus, we see that the Green's theorem gives us a formula for evaluating the area of the region R in terms of the line integral half x dy minus y dx integrated along the contour C. Let us now see an example for this application of Green's theorem in finding area. The question here is calculate the area of the region R bounded by the asteroid which is given in parametric coordinates as x equal to a cos cube t, y equal to a sin cube t, where t varies from 0 to 2 pi. So we know that the asteroid will look like this. And now we remember that the area of the region is given by this formula half line integral x dy minus y dx integrated along the contour c. And we also know that in parametric form, this same equation may be written as half integral xt dy dt minus yt dx dt multiplied with dt where t varies from alpha to beta. And here, of course, our alpha is 0 and beta is 2 pi. So let us now try to evaluate this line integral. So here in this parametric form of the equation, we substitute the equations of the asteroid 
as x equal to a cos cube t and y equal to a sin cube t. So as we substitute this over here, we get a cos cube t and now as we differentiate, this is 3a sin squared t cos t minus a sin cube t and as we differentiate this again, now we get 3a cos squared t minus sin t t t and t varies from 0 to 2 pi. So as we simplify this equation, this 3a square comes out. So we have here 3a square by 2 cos 4t sin square t plus sin 4t cos square t. Now if we take sin square t cos square t common, we will get now cos square t plus sin square t which is of course 1. And here we take a 4 and divide by 8 to adjust this half. Because this 4 sin squared t cos squared t, now we will write it as sin 2t whole square, which will help us in integration. So this is what we have written. And now sin squared 2t, we can again write as 1 minus cos 4t by 2. So this gives us 3a square by 16, integral 1 minus cos 4t dt, where t varies from 0 to 2 pi. So as we integrate this expression, we get t minus sine 4t by 4. We will put the limits from 0 to 2 pi. And finally, the answer will come as 3a squared pi by 8. Let us now see some direct application of Green's theorem in evaluating a line integral. So we have a question over here. Using Green's theorem, evaluate the line integral xy dx plus x plus y dy over the curve C, which is the bounding disk R. So, that means this is the region, a uh, unique disk bounded by the curve C. Now, we will apply Green's theorem to evaluate this integral. So, we remember this is our Green's formula that the line integral P dx plus Q dy along the curve C is given by del q del x minus del p del y dx dy over r. And in this question, we can see easily that p is x y and q is x plus y. So if we use this, now the line integral will be converted into a double integral. And this is double integral del del x of x plus y minus del del y of x y dx dy over the region R. So as we find this expressions, we get this is nothing but 1 minus x dx dy over the region R. So next task is to evaluate this double integral. And see that because the region of integration R is nothing but a circular region, it will be advantageous if we transform to polar coordinates. So, as we convert to polar coordinates, the double integral 1 minus x dx dy over r will be written like this because now x is r cos theta and we remember that dx dy, this differential in polar coordinates is replaced by r dr d theta. And because our region is a circle of radius 1, so of course r will vary from 0 to 1 and theta from 0 to 2 pi. So, we simplify this, this becomes r minus r square cos theta dr and then we will again integrate with respect to theta. So as we proceed to integrate, we see that this will be r square by 2 minus r cube by 3 cos theta with the limits of r going from 0 to 1. So as we put the limits, this will give us half minus cos theta by 3. And again, we integrate. So this gives us theta by 2 minus sine theta by 3. We will put the limits. And of course, both sine 0 and sine 2 pi are 0. So the final answer is nothing but pi. Let us see now one more example where we will verify Green's theorem. So the problem is like this, that verify Green's theorem in the plane for the integral y squared dx plus x plus y squared dy along the curve C, where this contour C is the triangle ABD with the vertices A, with the points A0, B, AA and D, 0A. So, we draw the region here. 
So these are the points A, A0, B given by AA and D given by 0A. So we have drawn the triangle ABD which marks the boundary C of this region R. So we are going to verify the Green's theorem. That means we will evaluate both the line integral directly as well as convert the line integral into a double integral and check that both the sides should have the same value. Now see that as in the given problem, your P is Y square and Q is X plus Y whole square. So del Q del X will be 2X plus Y and del P del Y will be 2Y. Next, let us now try to evaluate this line integral. So this line integral, as we convert it into a double integral, this becomes 2x plus y because it is del q del x minus del p del y dx dy. So 2x plus y minus 2y dx dy. So ultimately this becomes 2 double integral x dx dy. So our now task is to evaluate this double integral ax dx dy over the region R. And that means now, of course, we have to find the limits of x and y such that this region is covered. So if we treat this as a type 1 region and take a vertical strip and try to find the limits of y, we see that y will vary from this lower curve, that means the straight line AD, to the upper curve BD. Now, what is the equation of AD? AD is passing through the points A0 and 0A. So we can easily see that the equation of this straight line will be x plus y equal to A or otherwise we can write y equal to minus x plus A. And of course, BD is given by nothing but y equal to A. So as we put this limits, we get the value of the double integral slowly. So we see that this 2 times double integral ax dx dy now becomes 2 times 0 to a and the inner integral is minus x plus a to a dy x dx because the inner integral we are integrating with y and as discussed the limits are minus x plus a to plus a and next we will integrate with respect to x and of course we can easily see that the limits of x will be from 0 to a. So as we proceed to calculate the integral, integral dy is of course y and this goes from minus x plus a to a. So as we put the limits, we get a minus of minus x plus a. So as we simplify, actually a has cancelled and we get x squared dx. We integrate, this gives us 2 times x cubed by 3, 0 to a. So the, finally the answer is 2 a cubed by 3. Now, at this step, we have actually converted the line integral to a double integral and then evaluated it. Next, in order to verify the Green's theorem, now we will directly evaluate the line integral. And as we proceed to evaluate the line integral, we observe that the contour C actually comprises of three curves as shown over here, C1, that means the straight line going from A to B, C2, the straight line going from B to D, and C3, which is the straight line going from D to A. So this C is nothing but C1 plus C2 plus C3. And let us observe the equations of this curves. C1 is this straight line, which is x equal to A, C2 is here, which is y equal to a, and C3 is, of course, x plus y equal to a. So let us now proceed to evaluate the line integral. So the line integral will be evaluated as sum of three line integrals along C1, the next one along C2, and the last one along C3. Now let us look into these expressions closely. So as we will try to evaluate this line integral along C1, what happens? C1 is the straight line x equal to a. So therefore, dx is equal to 0 now. 
So if dx is 0, so this term will vanish. So we will be only left with x plus y whole square dy. And as x equal to a, so the integrand now becomes a plus y whole square. We will integrate with respect to y. And y we can see easily that y varies from 0 to a. So these are the limits. Now let us come to the line integral along c2. What is c2? c2 is y equal to a. So now dy will be 0. So this term will now vanish. We will be left with y squared dx. Now y is a. So this is a squared dx. And what are the limits of x? See that along c2 we are going from b to d. So x is varying from a to 0. And the third integral is evaluated along c3. The equation of c3 we have seen is x plus y equal to a. So let us do one thing. Let us represent y in terms of x. So therefore, this y is a minus x. So the first term y square, this is now a minus x square. We will have the dx plus x plus y square dy. Now x plus y is a. So this will give us a square. And notice that as per this equation, dy will be minus dx. So we have a minus sign over here. Now, as we will simplify this term and integrate all these integrals one by one, the answer we can easily check will come as 2a cubed by 3. And this is what we had already obtained when we had converted the line integral into a double integral. So therefore, we have verified the Green's theorem. With this, we will close today's session. In the next lecture session, we will take up surface integrals of vector fields, which will actually help us to look into the other two theorems of this course, that is Gauss's theorem and Stokes' theorem. Goodbye till then and thank you.